So this year has not been a successful one for me. Uh, emotionally, physically, and especially not financially. <laughs> and I think I'm not the only one that that's happened to. And uh, I wonder why. So I decided that for Christmas I was going to try and still give good presents, but sort of scale back how much I had to spend on them. So I decided to sew a lot of presents. I got really into sewing um, just after the level four lockdown onto level three. It was sort of um, just a sort of last ditch effort to bring my mental health up because I was drowning and I needed something positive. So I thought sewing, it is, it is repetitive. It is, it is constructive. And at the end of it, I have something to use. That's gotta be good for my mental health. And it was, so that worked out. So in this video, I am sewing an apron for my grandma for Christmas. My partner bought the fabric and I sewed it. So I consider it a sort of a present from both of us because it wouldn't have happened without him purchasing the material needed to actually make it. But uh, he can't sew, so. <laughs> This is the first uh, proper wearable garment I've ever made and I wanted to share my sewing journey with you as just a sort of another creative outlet for myself. So, onwards. So this is a nice linen. I think linen is just a really nice fabric to work with. Um, I really like reading about it and I really like the feel, just mmm. Mm, feels feels nice and especially since linen is like one of those fabrics that gets softer the more you wash it but it also can like really take a bill beating I thought it was really good both for handkerchiefs and for aprons because both of those things get pretty mucky and they get washed quite often um so I picked this nice sort of I guess I I consider this like a lilac sort of color but I guess it's more pinky uh, for my grandma and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an apron and I think <laughs> I think this should be relatively simple because I think aprons are basically like rectangle for the top rectangle for the skirt and then long thin rectangles for the bands fingers crossed this isn't too hard it's it, I am hand sewing it so it is just gonna like take forever but hopefully it's not like really ridiculously hard. Um, even if it's bad, I know my grandma will love it. <laughs> that's, such, that's such a get out of jail free card is like, my grandparents love me, so they don't care if I do a bad job. <laughs> I am trying to do a good job, but we will, we will see <laughs> if I achieve a good job. <laughs> or if it's just like when I was little and I, I made them cards with their names spelled incorrectly. Anyway, so first things first is I've got to iron this. I got quite a lot of fabric. Um, maybe I'll have a lot left over, but I've got to iron it because it's been sitting. I washed it and it's been sitting in my cupboard and it's all creasified. And then once it's nicely ironed, I will measure it out. Now, my grandma is a little bit wider than me and a little bit shorter than me. So in order to get the measurements without giving the game away, I'd be like, hey, grandma, how big would you say you are across the chest? No, no reason. Uh, I asked my mum for, you know, this sort of measurement across here and this measurement here. Um, because my mum is a little bit closer to my grandma in size, but in terms of the length, I'm going to be doing myself because, and I hate that I have to admit this on camera. Well, I don't have to, I guess, but I'm gonna. I hate admitting this on camera, but I am shorter than my mum. Hello, darkness, my old friend. By like half an inch, or maybe just half a centimeter. My cat is moon pie. This is not for play. No. Bog off, sir. It's quite soothing, actually. 
actually. I mean, I am hot. I'm like, <laughs> uh, but I quite like the noise, the iron across the fabric. Okay, that is done. Here is Moon Pie. <laughs> who is probably going to get kicked out because he's not going to be helpful. No, he's not going to be helpful. <laughs> um, so I've got my tailor's chalk and I've got my fabric pan, my washable fabric pan, and I've got my very heavy and expensive fabric scissors. Uh, definitely, if you want to cut things out with fabric, invest in some fabric scissors. Trying to do it with normal scissors, it's a nightmare and you end up ruining your fabric as well and also kind of like hurting your hand. So if you can't afford like any of the other sewing paraphernalia, then sewing scissors. Save up for some sewing scissors and then the rest you can kind of fudge until you have some more money. Okay, I realized they didn't quite have everything that I needed. Um, so here's an apron that my grandma got me. And um, this one kind of, it kind of like, it's not really a rectangle. It kind of like goes out to the waist. I mean, pie. Mine. So I'll just measure on me from uh, probably a little lower down. I have to take into account my grandma has a larger boost than myself. Um, so probably we're going to fudge it and maybe I won't keep this part in the video so no one yells at me for doing it wrong. Now it's time for me to start to make my rectangle. And I think, yeah, I think I just want it to be a straight rectangle because this will be harder to handle. So <laughs> fine cats are liquid um because yeah i think the triangle sort of thing will be a little harder for me to hem and i am doing this all by hand and i have a month to do it in out my toes so yes let's get started on the measurement let's pick a line let's pick a line this one's pretty chunky I have to make the less margin forever I think there is. I gotta let my cat in. You can't lock them out for too long otherwise the lesson doesn't work. Oh, look. He's gone, he's moved on, he's like I, I bit you and now I'm satisfied. That looks short. That looks that looks short. And that's kind of the horror of 
cutting things out to fit your body is you realize how small you are. I'm like, oh, this looks like an apron for a child. I've never been good at cutting things out. You know when, like, you'd have those days of cutting things out at school? I'd be like... And it still would come out crooked. really overestimated how much fabric I'm gonna need. Unless I like really screw this up. If I royally screw this up, I do have like, yeah, more than enough fabric to make another one. So maybe I can make myself one and we'll have matching ones. Matchy matchy with my grandma. She'd love that. She'd love that. Those are cut out, that is done. So what I need to do is I need to hem around the top and the bottom and then attach the bottom to the top. And then it's figure out straps time. So onwards. <laughs> Segway. <laughs> okay, I, I apologize for the note on screen. That was for me to come back. I'd remember to add a voiceover, but due to some technical difficulties with my editing software on my laptop, I couldn't change this part. So yeah, the words, the words are still there. I tried, I really did try. Anyway, all I'm doing is ironing down my hems so that they stay where they are. Um, and also the pins, of course, are to help them stay where they are. But the Ironing the hem really, really helps, and then I just have to sew it all together. Never trust women in tattered 90s in the middle of nowhere. She don't even got shoes on, my guy. She's gonna kill him. She's a ghost. Drive away. She's a ghost. Bro, what are you doing? Bro, you think it's all out? Okay, so I have finished the top and the skirt separately. Here is the top. I think it might be just like maybe half a quarter of an inch too wide because I realized I, I left myself a one inch seam allowance and when I folded it over, I didn't actually fold in the full inch. Um, you'll probably see, have seen it in the video. Uh, and that's just me just being bad at visualizing. So uh, my hem on my skirt and on my top looks slightly different. This is what the top looks like. This is the inside. As you can see, it's it's a thinner hem, more traditionally like clothing that we do have. But on the skirt, it's a much wider hem, but it is also the correct length. I actually figured out that I didn't need to um, to sew the bottom because I'm or the top of the skirt, the top, bottom of the top, or the top of the skirt because I will be sewing the skirt to the top. So the next stage now is to go through and 
gather the skirt from this width down to the width of the top. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to sew two lines of thread across the top of the skirt. And I've already started to mark a little bit with my chalk there, as you can see. So one at half an inch and one at the inch line. And then these lines are at half an inch so that my threads are even on the top and the bottom. Since I am doing this by hand, it is harder to make them match as I've tried with slightly practice other garments. Um, so you pull two threads there, relatively strong, but not, not the, the nice thread that I've used to hem it that matches the fabric because I'm going to remove it or it's going to be on the inside of the fabric anyway. And then what you do is you pull it and that gathers the fabric down from this to this. And hopefully it will be relatively even. I will pin it to the top and then I will sew it. Um, probably I'll do a basting stitch to, you know what, I'll, I'll cover that in the voiceover. Okay. Anyway, if you saw my get ready with me, you'll recognize this. Unless the get ready with me video comes out after this, in which case, look forward to how I did this. So here I'm just marking my half an inch down from the top and my inch down from the top and then half an inch across to make sure that when I sew my two gathering lines, they are, you know, the same width and the same placement they go over at the same place, they go under at the same place, and that just means that the gathers will be more even. So I've edited out how difficult it was for me to actually place my gathers correctly and make sure that they were relatively even along the line. It was excruciatingly painful for me. But anyway, I, I managed to pin them in place and then what I'm doing is I'm doing a basting stitch and a basting stitch is just a sort of loose strip stitch that keeps it in place. So when you do your real stitching, you're not worried about them slipping and sliding everywhere, which is really important, especially since the gathers were so hard, I really didn't want those bad boys moving. and attached to each other. I am so excited and so proud of myself. I, I was like doing a little excited jump yesterday looking at it. I think the gathering actually looks okay. It's not super even, but I still think it looks pretty cute. And when it's in motion, you probably won't be able to tell too much. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it to where I reckon it'll be worn and then measure myself around for the straps. So I measure myself around here for the straps and measure myself around my neck for the strap. <laughs> so my very, my very good testing uh, shows that's 31 inches for the length. The width, I think, I think about two fingers is about enough um, in terms of width. Or well, maybe, um, yeah, I think I think about two fingers. So let's just see how big my my little fingers are. They are just under an inch and a half. So an inch and a half across for the straps. I'm gonna double them in length. 
uh, I doubled them in width when I cut them out so that I can fold them in half, sew them inside out, and then I've got it. I've got it in my brain. I can't explain it, but it's in here. And now I just need to have the straps. You know what? I'll just make them the same length as the strap. I think. I think going too long is better than going too small. I wouldn't want her to not be able to tie it up. So let's just let's just double check. That's a length I can bow. Very, very mathematic, very, very scientific. Okay, so the straps for the waist, I just pinned them to the apron and tried them around. I can get them in a bow easily on myself but there wasn't a lot of train left and I couldn't like tie it at the back and then tie it around my stomach which my grandma likes to do so I think I might add just another 10 inches like just cut out another 10 inches and then just sew it to these um shouldn't be too much of a problem just to make them a little longer or I could just cut out longer strips <laughs> yeah I'll just cut out longer strips I'm sure I'll find a use for these one day. So what I'm doing here is I am sewing the strap inside out. And then after I did some trial and error. First of all, I didn't, I just sewed it inside out and then I tried to pull it in um, right side out and that was extremely difficult. So the next time I put a safety pin right at the end and then pulled it through a string and that didn't really work until I'd already done it by hand halfway and then I could pull it the rest of the way. As you can see, Moon Pie is being very helpful. <laughs> So I ended up putting safety pins every 10 inches and then I pulled the string and as you can see it is still quite difficult but it did it, it did work. I think if the straps had been any thinner I just they would have gotten stuck. But it was still a lot quicker than having to to very slowly pull them inside out by hand so I don't know, I guess I'll fiddle around with this method if I ever have to do straps again and maybe a string that is a little gentler on the hands would be better. Either way, it worked, they're done, I'm very pleased with how they turned out. Time for buttons! So I used the straps that I'd cut that were too short actually as practice for my buttonholes. I cut about four buttonholes and then I sewed them around. They're not good, they're not tidy, but I did enjoy doing them and I think they will function just fine. I think only the middle two buttonholes will be needed by my grandma anyway. I was cutting through four layers of fabric and it's very frayable and all I had was scissors rather than, you know, the appropriate tools that you're supposed to use. So it's a bit of a hack job. It's not the best, but I do think it's serviceable. <laughs> And once the button was sewn on and the buttonholes were finished, I was done. So time for the final reveal. I'm really 
happy with how it came out. Just so proud of myself for, for sewing it. it. I think it's I think it's really lovely. It does need a sew, a little iron before I give it to my grandma, obviously. But I think she's really gonna like it, so um I hope you enjoyed this video.